Hello and welcome back. I have just started MS Access. Depending on which version you have, you will see this first screen. In X Access 2013 or Access 365, you see this screen. In fact, you can see a photo of mine here with my name and my email address. You can search for online templates. There are suggested searches. And below that, you have databases that you can select. For example, you have custom web app. This is a new introduction in Excel 2013. Then you have a blank database, blank desktop database. Then you have templates for contacts, asset tracking, issue tracking, and so on. All right. So because we want to learn access database right from the beginning, we will start with a blank database. So I'm going to click on that. And the first thing you're asked is what name would you like to give this? So you can call this my database. Okay. Then access also offers you the folder where you can save it. It automatically offers you something like this, for example. But you can click here and you can browse for a location to put your database wherever you like. Okay. So I'll keep this default value here. Go to create and you will see now a database called my database has been created and it also creates table one, which shows you the column header or field name ID. You can click here and add more. But as I said, since we are learning databases, it's better to start designing your own table first. So because tables are the foundation of any database, we will start with learning how to design a table. Of course, we have a plan in mind. For example, for my database, I would like to create three tables. I have some planning in my mind, but the more you plan your database, the better it is. So let us go to the Create tab here in the ribbon. Of course, you know the standard windows structure. This is well known from Word or Excel or PowerPoint. Of course, because now you are in a different software, you have different tools here. This is very similar to comparing how to use a knife to cut a tomato or to cut meat, isn't it? So because we are doing something different, so we need different tools. So we will now go to create. We will go to table and here we will not take this one because that is already there we will go to table design okay so we will click on this and you will immediately see the importance of doing this through the design mode so we have a table two here now you see as compared to excel where you can just start entering data and oftentimes people just enter about any data any in any cell and that makes life sometimes very difficult. Here, however, you have to define the data type you're going to enter. For example, if you take the field name, we can write a field name here. So I'm going to write, for example, student ID. Okay. So student ID. As we go along, you'll understand this very quickly. So we go to data type. When we click here, Access offers you short text. Now, if you go here to field size, let me just minimize this a little bit like this. See here, <coughs> excuse me. So you have short text and the field size is 255. So you can change this also, but this is the maximum field size. Now, if you click on this drop down arrow, then you can see the different data types that you can assign. All right. As we go along, we will learn about each data type. But short text just means text 
that you can write up to 255 characters here and you can reduce this and you can have anywhere between 0 and 255. What is the idea? The more accurate your field size, then your data become, database becomes better, isn't it? For example, instead of 255, you would write 50 and you would know that the student ID is going to be restricted to 50 characters, then your database works faster, all right? Now, we will go to the next field and we can write here, for example, first name. We will go here and this is again short text because first name is short text. And did you notice I don't leave a space here? So my first name, although if you click here, access tells you a field name can be up to 64 characters long, including spaces. This is for this version. All right. Generally, it is recommended not to put spaces in your field names. Now here also, I would like to tell you student ID, I have selected short text, which is not the right thing to do. So I'm going to click here and select an auto number. Okay. Auto number is a number that access will assign automatically. It start with 001, for example, or just one and go to two, three, four, five. So even if you have first name John and second name Smith and you have 20 such students in your list, Still, they will be unique because the record will contain an ID that will differentiate from the other names. All right. You can write a description here, but I generally don't use it because this is self-explanatory, isn't it? So we will now press the tab key again and we can write here last name. All right. Now. If you still want it that when you display this in the data sheet view, you get a space, then you can do a nifty thing. Let me do that for you. So I'll go to first name and you see here caption. So you can click here and just write first name. Okay. All right. And let me show you the data view now. We will see the difference between the first name and the last name, how it is displayed. So we will go to view, data sheet view. So it says you must first save the table, which is fine. We will save this. We'll give it a good name. For example, we can write student T, T for table, or you can write a prefix TBL student. Do it the way you like, do it the way you find convenient, but stick to it. Okay. So this is pretty good, I think. So we'll say, okay. Now it says a primary key has been not defined. So it also tells you whether we should define a primary key. Now, if I say yes, it will definitely take the student ID as the primary key. Let's see. And there it is. Did you notice that? Because we had selected the data type as auto number. All right. Now, you could start entering your data here. But let's go back to the design view and put some more fields. Okay. So let's say we put a field here, for example, email, because I want to use some different data types. So I go here, short text, instead of short text, I can take a hyperlink. Okay. Similarly, I can go here and say photo or photograph. Let me write photo. So I'll go here and instead of short text, I can take an OLE object. OLE object, you'll see what it is. For example, you can use a photograph here. Okay. We will see how that is done. In fact, in the required field here below, we could just write yes. That means you cannot do without this, but we leave it for the time being. Now we can go here and define, let us say gender. Okay. We go here now, we need to take a lookup wizard. So I'll click on lookup wizard and you see it shows you this new window. Now we can take it from another table or we can use this one because we just have male and female. So we'll say next 
and here in this column we will type here number of columns will keep as one and here we will say for example female and here we will say male okay and next so what label would you like to like for a lookup field it takes gender okay so we will say all right finish so when you come back to your design view and look at gender you see here short text but if you go to look up here you can see here it's female and male right i will go to the data sheet view okay we'll save this and i will just scroll to the gender area here click here and if you notice here it shows male female so this is how you will be allowed to select all right let me now go again to the design view and uh, we can add maybe something else we will go here and we can enter for example if the we can ask the user whether he has basic computing knowledge okay so we write basic computing and here now we will use the boolean yes or no so does the user have some knowledge of computing and then he can select all right so let's go to the data sheet view and we'll save this all right and let's go to basic computing you see here you can select whether the person has yes or no you see that if you select it's yes if you don't select it's no all right let's go back to the design view what else do we have as data type we have uh, quite a few we have for example number but at present we don't have a number here we can use this for example when we write the fees of the students and that would come in the area of the course date and time we'll use date and time now so we'll write for example date of birth we'll go to general here we will go here first and date of birth we will take date and time all right and if you go to general here now this doesn't look very nice so we can change the caption we can write date of birth like this isn't it now let's have a look at the data sheet view again of course access is going to ask us to save this which is okay so there we are you see here date of birth let me just make this little bigger so you don't see date of birth together but separate and here you see basic computing is together because we didn't separate it isn't it but we can do the same as what we did here all right let's go back to the design view so we have done quite a bit now we have short text long text we we didn't use we can use it if we want to write more text number we said we will use in our course fees date and time we have used in currency we can instead of number use currency also auto number we have used yes and no we have used only object we have used hyperlink we have used for the email attachment for example let's do that for example we could write here resume all right so we could go here press tab key and instead of just short text we could write an attachment here so it says here and we can actually say required yes so we can tell the student to give us a short resume all right what else do we have lookup wizard we have done when we use gender calculated field we will use when we create other objects in microsoft access so we have fundamentally understood how to create a table 
isn't it? Now we need to put some data. We will put data into the tables next time in our new video. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching.